The Pakistan government today banned the formation of certain types of political parties. The new law is issued under the authority of President General Mohammad Ziaul Haq. The order bans formation of parties opposed to the Islamic ideology or the sovereignty, integrity or security of Pakistan. It also includes those opposed to the maintenance of public order and those which are foreign aided. The move has prompted speculation about the fate of the party of jailed former Prime Minister Zulfagar Ali Bhutto. In related news, the Pakistan government yesterday announced restrictions on certain unnamed opposition newspapers. They will be asked to submit seven types of editorial materials material to officials for scrutiny before publishing. Provisional results from Canada's by-elections yesterday dealt Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau's ruling Liberal Party a severe blow. Trudeau's party managed to win just two out of 15 elections for vacant parliamentary seats. The opposition leaders termed the results an unstoppable protest against both the party and Trudeau's leadership. The Liberals still control a majority in the 264-seat House of Commons. But Joe Clark's opposition Progressive Conservative Party came out of the big winner provisional originally taking 10 out of 15 vacant seats. The main issue in the campaign were the government's handling of the ailing Canadian economy and Trudeau's own popularity. The Canadian Union of Postal Workers began a national strike last night. Leaders of the 23,000-member union called the walkout at midnight just hours after meeting with acting Labour Minister André Ouellet. The union faces back-to-work legislation ready to be introduced today by the federal government. The union president has suggested members will disobey any back-to-work bill. This is if the government does nothing to improve working conditions or undercuts provisions won in the last contract which expired mid-1977. Six people were killed and 33 injured yesterday when tens of thousands of Iranians participated in mourning ceremonies throughout the country. The ceremonies marked the 40th day after the clash between demonstrators and martial law officers. Most shops were closed yesterday in Tehran in response to calls by several religious leaders and politicians to observe a day of mourning to commemorate the death of the demonstrators. Public mourning ceremonies took place in many other towns around the country. An explosion caused by a small homemade bomb injured an American passenger on a bus belonging to the Bell Helicopter Company in Isfahan last week. The incident took place on October the 11th as the bus stopped at a crossing. The crude explosion device was tossed into the bus through an open window. Sources say the wounded American passenger suffered only superficial injuries and did not require hospitalization. Twelve Americans, all employees of Bell International, were traveling home from work on the bus. At an open session of the Majlis today, an opposition deputy from Karaj Abbas Akhbari sought a show cause notice from the government of Prime Minister Jafar Sharif Imami. Akhbari charged the government with acting in violation of the Second Amendment article of the Iranian Constitution. Akhbari also claimed the so-called Reconciliation Cabinet includes a large number of ministers who held positions in earlier governments. The deputy thus argued since these ministers were responsible for the acts of the former governments, the present government government should be taken to task for the misdeeds committed by earlier ones. He also said the present government has been so negligent in its anti-corruption campaign that several officials have already fled the country. Akhbari said only a few people were taken into custody. The deputy charged the government had failed in neglecting to check the exit of such persons and their wealth from the country. Saudi Arabia's oil minister, Sheikh Ahmed Zaki Yamani, yesterday said he would not be surprised if oil exporting nations decided on a reasonable price increase. The basic oil prices charged by members of OPEC has been unchanged since January 1977 at $12.70 per barrel. Thirteen OPEC oil ministers are scheduled to meet in mid-December in Abu Dhabi to set OPEC prices for the new year. Several OPEC members, including Iraq, are pushing for sizable price increases, while others are seeking a more modest increase. But Yamani said in the longer term, a considerable price increase was necessary to conserve current oil stocks. 
An estimated 150,000 Americans working abroad will face a complex new set of rules for paying their taxes under a new bill awaiting President Carter's consideration. The bill passed by Congress Sunday aims to clarify a situation that's been confused for nearly two years. For 1977 taxes only, taxes may be filed either under the pre-1976 system or the law passed in 1976. The pre-76 version allowed $20,000 in foreign earnings to be exempt, whereas the 1976 version cut the exclusion to $15,000. Beginning with tax returns for 1978, most expatriate workers will be allowed several deductions instead of a flat exclusion. Those people who haven't filed their 1977 tax returns have until November 15th to do so without penalty. Actor-dancer Dan Daly died at his Los Angeles home yesterday after a long illness. Daly sang and danced his way through more than a score of Hollywood musicals in the 40s and 50s, including Give My Regards to Broadway and There's No Business Like Show Business. He was 62 and a spokesman said Daly had been suffering from severe anemia and had been ill for several months. There are so many different villages and picnic areas around Tehran which you can go and enjoy the weekend. One of these areas is Ahar, located in the northeastern part of Tehran. Ahar is an attractive small village with a population of 1,000 in the winter and 4,000 in the summer when the weather is fresh and good. You can enjoy the quiet and beautiful area for at least nine months every year. I was there this weekend.